Welcome back to Rogue Trader. We're gonna go back to um, Rikaldiphilia here. Uh, just real quick. So I'm gonna see if I can close out that quest. I didn't want to disturb the person by asking about the interrogator uh, when we entered, but I think I'm gonna do that anyway if they're still here. Which I don't Let think they are. Doodle. a bit unfortunate actually always keep your eye on the price might not be able to do that just no I hmm. always keep my options open Okay, that's that's actually kind of unfortunate. Don't think they went inside uh, either, right? Don't think so. I wonder if I can open this. Doesn't Rise look to the like top it. Or get left in the dust. So I think they left. A bit unfortunate, but okay. That happens. That happens. Okay. Let's go to the unidentified void ship. Master Helmsman Raver. The Vox crackles to life, and Master Helmsman Raver addresses you. What we have here, Lord Captain, is it is not very noticeable. But there's a void ship sitting in the local asteroid field. It sure is quiet, like it's huddled up in their own purpose. It's not like I'm surprised. The thing is more scrap heap than ship at this point. Somebody sure went to town on it. We're registering critical damage on the hull and the depressurization of several compartments. Oh, uh, there's an incoming transmission now too. Hear us? The Vox transmission hisses and abruptly cuts to static. Do not require assistance. Pete, do not require assistance. Copy. Keep following. They'll pass us by, won't they? Protects. <clears throat> Lord Captain, I am told our augurs cannot determine the allegiance of the vessel. To be brief, there is an unidentified and badly damaged vessel within an asteroid field near Rikaldiphilia colony that is refusing help. Which, not to put a fine point in, it, point in it, has not yet been offered to them. Rather, can we establish communications? Let the vessel identify itself. Yes, Lord Captain. The connection is established. Unknown vessel, we're receiving you. Identify yourself. I repeat, identify yourself. For a brief moment, the Vox only hisses and snaps. Then several voices at once start shouting over one another. Do not tell him. Do not tell. Tell him. We're done for. This is Thunderfang. We are. One of the voices falters uh, uncertainly and is replaced by another. Uh, merchant vessel, do you uh, copy? We are a private chant vessel. A merchant vessel, of course they are. Damn, my stupid head. Where did I hear this name before? Thunderfang. 
Thunderfang, why can we not identify you? You can make a uh, out horse and fears whispering even uh, over the crackling of the static. Why? I don't know. What if? Certainly not. The whispering dies and a clear youthful voice cuts through the static. Our uh, vessel is badly damaged. Uh, Amage is preventing the correct uh, Indan identification. We assure you... Uh, Syphil merchant vessel. Thunderfang does not require aid. Let's see if we can uh, have a rather damage report on the unknown vessel. Telemetry shows multiple hull breaches, most likely caused by the guns of a combat ship. Several compartments are leaking air. The bridge has been almost completely obliterated. Two of the engines are critically damaged. Somebody gave them a thrashing so solid they barely able to limp away. Underfang, your vessel is badly damaged. What happened to you? The Vox responds by bursting into a cacophony of sounds, words, and emotions. Someone chuckles bitterly, another swears with some foul uh, expletive, expletives, and another hisses, furiously demanding that the others shut up. You managed to make out little from all this noise. We were just flying, minding our own business, straight out of the blue, and opened fire. Miracle we could get away, Emperor protected. And then, more fire. Who? Void only knows. Roasted our tail, bombed everything. The folks, our folks, are left without help. We never got to them. Well... Thunderfang, now stop playing games and explain again what your business is here, and this time I highly recommend the truth. Happy now? What have you done, idiot? It's too late now. The Vox channel is again filled with angry whispering of several voices. The whispers and static are drowned out by a clear and slightly frightened voice. Do you copy? We are from Fellowship of the Void. We did not come here to loot on different business. To help our own out of jail. Do not hurt. We already have our chronos cleaned. How about the striking a deal? Our um, hold is full of... Uh, lunder. I mean uh, goods. <clears throat> In case you are unaware, Lord Captain, the Fellowship of the Void is a, is a disorderly assembly of several dozen pirate factions in the chronos expanse. They consider themselves above regular heretics solely because they sometimes have vox conversations with those whom are about to, with those whom they're about to board. Were it up to me, I would make them eat a salvo from the macro guns to shake the scum loose from the deck. They certainly deserve it. Hyfactotum Janis Danrock. The honey-eyed voice of the Hyfactotum interrupts the translation with a polite cough. I would wait on destroying the vessel if I were you, although the moral aspect of their li livelihood do cause some awkward questions. The Fellowship of the Void remains a major supplier of goods to the local market. Uh, perhaps you'll find dealing with them acceptable, especially in a situation where performing a warp jump is impossible. I mean, do we trade with them or not? Yeah, no. Let's uh, let's destroy them. Main gun deck on my order. Aim weapons. Target Thunderfang. Your Lordship, I beg forgiveness for my impertinence, but let me remind you once again: we're currently locked in the system without the ability to jump anywhere else. Uh, be reasonable. Do you really now of all times want to get rid of a trading partner? And remember, the Fellowship of the Void is very likely to learn what is about to transpire. Fine, 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 fine. Fine, Danrock. Have it your way. Main gun deck. Belay that order. May the God Emperor be bless your wisdom. Let's see if we can uh, have a commercial exchange with them.
Well, what's an RP? Or is that reputation? Or what? Did I trade that or what? Profit factor. Okay. Where do I see the money that I have? Oh, okay. So with different rep here, we can... Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we need more than one rep to be able to buy these. Interesting. And we can get rid of some of these things that we have uh, several of. Like the flak. New cargo has been created. What do you mean? Oh, this is ranged weapon. Okay, okay, okay. So you can get rid of... ...this. This here. How do, like, how do I know which one it is? So we have our armor kit 90%, for example. This would be this one. Mm, okay, fine. Let's go to Rikad Minoris. Let's see what we can do. As the ship makes its way through the star system, a strange fatigue falls over you. Your eyelids grow heavy and the quill you have been using to drop yet another order falls from your hand. You raise your head with a star start. Someone else is here in your study. You stand up and stare at the dozens of dozens of corpses surrounding you. Among their number, you recognize the disfigured and bloodied faces of those who died on the ship's bridge and those you met in your previous life. How is this possible? Where are the enforcers posted to stand guard? It matters not. You're alone against a horde of heretics risen from the darkness to take your life. As of its own accord, the shard lying on the edge of the desk 
The sole remnant of Conrad Vogetvir's weapon slips into your hand. The metal is searing cold. The dead sway from side to side, closing in around you in a nightmarishly slow advance. Step back, step back, or else. The dead only draw closer and closer, and your fingers involuntarily tighten around the shard, its sharp edge cutting into your palm. An unbearably bright light floods everything around you. You find yourself surrounded by groveling minions, their bodies shivering in your mere presence. Your hands no longer hold a pitiful shard, but a majestic and intricate weapon, a skillfully crafted sword with a strange, unnerving proportions. A curved design and an unusual hilt adorned with the image of a closed eye. The eyes open wide, revealing a gaze so ancient and dark that it steals your breath away. You've felt this gaze before, there on the bridge and the voice that appears in your mind only confirms your guess. The tapestry is woven, the path is chosen. Accept your fate, champion. No, throw the demon blade away and say never. Your body refuses to obey your mind. The handle feels as if it has become one with your hands and the gaze of the demonic eye sets your very soul ablaze. Resisting your fate is futile. You scream as you feel your soul burn away to ash. You awaken from the vision, kneeling next to your dusk, clothes drenched in sweat and with sour taste on your tongue. Your head is ringing and you struggle to recall those faces and the image of the sword in your hands. Only the deep cut in your palm and the bodied, bloodied shard lying on the floor remind you of what just transpired. You would rather die than touch that thing again, so you reach a shaking hand of your vox and call for a servitor. Now you just have to wait for the mindless automation automaton to arrive to pick up the cursed artifact and head for the nearest airlock to be claimed by the void. My gut tells me it's a bad idea. So we failed the quest here, the call of the edge. Oh, okay. The powerful warp entity promised the rogue trader might on power if you manage to become the new champion of chaos. I'm like, no. No, no, no. Um I am going in here, actually. We'll do this. I don't think dual wielding uh, did anything. Maybe there's a talent for it or something. Okay. Oh, there's loot in here. What? Crack data slate. The final transactions with the chartist are complete. The Fury Reckoning is now fully equipped. The object has been loaded aboard with its contaminant intact and placed in the fore bay to ensure maximum contact with the target. Coordinates are sent and received by the target estimate time of arrival in the system. The Fury Reckoning is crewed by a servitor. Chances of the ship returning are minimal. Okay. I don't know what that is. Doesn't sound good. Unfinished letter. Chagrin is irrelevant. Vogitvir's mistake cost me too much. Years of work. Tremendous resources all wasted. He has failed at what he was supposed to be. Irreproachable at. Uncovering spies. And this... This one was a senior officer. I'm not about to discard him. Conrad has served me for too long for this removal to go painlessly for the protectorate. Besides, he's no fool. He could have not seriously expected to become the next in the Von Valanche's line when his skills and talents 
talents as master of whispers are so valuable. Let his disinheritance serve as a humiliating but instructive lesson from which he may yet learn. Yeah, I don't think that turned out too well, did it? Okay, so how do I actually get out from here? Um, can I leave, please? Can I not leave this area or what? Am I being stupid? Did this bug now, so I'm unable to continue? That would be sad. Okay. Let's do a... Okay, I don't know how to quick load, so... See if this works. Yep. I guess that worked. Can we finally go back to to the story now? Let's go. Brycad Minorius. Opening the map of the Cronus Expanse. The Cronus Expanse is a vast region of space where you'll travel between different star systems. In each system, unique events can occur. By steering your flagship towards them, you can explore plants, study anomalies, and interact with other ships. To switch to the map of the entire Kronos Expanse, click on the button at the bottom right of the screen. Okay. Bottom right of the screen. Bottom right of the screen. A bit confused. Okay, that pop up might be too early. I don't know. They patched the game today, and I feel like the game has been more buggy now than it has been before. Well, this looks promising. The starport greets you with the din of ordnance and the smell of explosives tickles in your nostrils. It's difficult to tell through the smoke who's firing at whom. Sergeant Malgar, halt! Weapons on the ground or I'm firing. A man in torn and dirty uniform hobbles towards you from behind the chunk of rockcrete and crumple, uh, crumpled plasteel. His cracked helmet is adorned with a crooked label that reads Sergeant Malgar. 
All right, so our skies are in lockdown. The rebels are shooting down anything that flies, and you lot just happen to land in our rear without a scratch to show for it. And a shuttle like that. Where did you get it? Stolen from the palace, isn't it? He visibly He's visibly awed by the resplendent gold of your transport. Grab them, lads. We've got a rebel landing for us. By the holy throne, what is this mess? They're in a rough spot, old man. Go easy on them. You must be mistaken. I am the rogue trader of House of Von Valanches. The soldier grows more and more pale with every word you say. As soon as you're done speaking, he falls to his knees. My mistake, your lordship. Didn't recognize you, sir. Please pardon my blunder. It's a bloodbath in here. A frag grenade explosion cuts off the rest of the sergeant's words. Grapnel flies everywhere with a piercing screech. One of the soldiers falls on the ground, clutching the remains of his forearm uh, that is now adorned with crimson tatters. Blood is pouring out of the stump and the soldier's agony is short-lived. The sergeant curses and has to hastily says uh, an army prayer for the dead. With a rasping cough, the sergeant turns back to you. Pardon me, sir. Sergeant Las Malgar reporting. My unit is holding the starport on the governor's order. How may I serve? What's going on here? <laughs> Unrest, sir. Armed rebellions in both the capital and the provinces. First the lower level sparked and then it went up the spires. They hit the vox hubs, the arsenals, the mag train stations. Then Felix tore off his mask, precisely because he knew about the trouble on Rykod Menoris. He knew that none of our allies would come to our aid. Cassia lets out a sorrowful sigh. You may uh, continue your report, peasant. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> well, she's not that nice. My unit was here when it all went to the Groxus. The tech priests linked to satellite report sightings of strange void ships in the systems. They were orbiting a star until one of them set course for the landing on Rykad Majoris. The governor took precautionary measures and ordered to increase security at key facilities. Everyone knows that whenever something's not right, you better double the warden details. The alarm was raised and we, uh, we were sent to secure the starport. It's the only reason we uh, were able to hold it. They're crushing us, the scumbags. It's been a whole turn since the last reinforcements came in. We're running low on ammo and every other fighter is wounded. I don't know how bad it is on the streets, but they'll drive us out of here any minute. Who are you, anyway? Sergeant Las Malgar, sir. 11th generation loyal soldier of House Winterscale, awarded three commendations for faultless service. Ever since the olden days, his lordship, the rogue trader, has recruited soldiers and shipwrights on Rikard Minoris, so there is no greater honor for a Rikadian than serving his lordship with diligence. What caused this rebellion? Uh, ill thoughts. Uh, sir, we've fallen on hard times. The ground keeps shaking, things keep exploding, the people are scared, they've forgotten all about their duty, and... That's when those, Emperor forgive me, creatures came. They started riling everyone up. Sure enough, we shot a few, but they just kept coming more and more of them. Pat him on the shoulder. You're doing fine work, Malgar and Sawyer troops. It's people like you that hold the Imperium together. I live to serve. The sergeant's grim voice rings with a martyr's pride. Do you happen to know if a member of the Inquisition has come here? At the word Inquisition, the sergeant's face fills with awe. I don't know, sir. There's definitely uh, There definitely haven't been any visitors like that on my watch. You might uh, have to inquire at the headquarters, your lordship, sir. I'm going to see the governor. If I may report, sir, as long as the rebels keep shooting their damned anti-aircraft battery, there's absolutely no way to shuttle you to the governor would have to be on foot and the streets are dangerous. I have no one to send with you as an escort. I assigned all available troops to accompany the esteemed tech priests to the governor. I will vox cast order to orders for them to wait for you and I'll inform headquarters. They better send out a convoy to meet you halfway. 
Meanwhile, we'll follow the governor's orders and hold the line here. Yadira frowns as her gaze grows distant, as if she's looking through the sergeant. You're a good soldier, but you've got a lot of blood on your hands, both your, yours and others. You know the same hand that salutes now might falter in darkness. Rank and uh, epaulets won't save you from the bitterness. Pardon me, my lady, but I can't get my head around these fancy words you're saying. I've seen pr plenty of blood, but trust me, I'll fight till my last drop. What tech priests? A very important person from the Adeptus Mechanicus arrived on the last shuttle before they locked down the sky. He kept on asking whether anyone by the name of Arm Amarant or Amarnat or something like that had recently arrived. Barely answered any of our questions though, said he was under no obligation to tell us anything. He demanded to talk to the governor personally, so I had to send a quarter of my troops with him to keep trouble at bay. Is the path ahead dangerous? What exactly awaits me there? The sergeant sighs heavily. All of our roadblocks are gone. The whole place is in the rebels' hands. The city is almost lost, so no help will come. We are surrounded by the rebels, and watch your steps, sir. The streets are chock full of mines. His remark about mines lodges itself in your memory. More than anything, you'll need to watch the ground and not your surroundings. You'd rather risk a shot from a rebel or a jittery soldier than experience a handful of lethal frag shrapnel resting on top of some 300 grams of explosive fiseline. You good soldier, Mal Malgar. I'll see to you that your heroism is noted. I live to serve. Another explosion interrupts the sergeant's words. With a sigh of relief, he turns to his soldiers and spits out a booming series of commands. On your travels, you'll hear many rumors. Those of them that are deserving of the rogue trader's attention are logged on in a separate section of the journal. Sometimes rumors are just that, other times there's truth to them, and in some cases there may even be more. Tr to verify a rumor, travel to the place indicated in the rumor's description. While traversing the Corona's expanse as the rogue trader, you're bound to hear rumors regarding your own deeds and exploits, some of which reflect the reaction of the expanse's denizens to choices you've made. According to the satellites, one of the identified void ships circling the nearby star has landed on a large, uninhabited world in the system. What system would that be? Uh, okay, fine. Okay. We don't really know which direction we're going, do we? There's definitely some loot here. That I want. I think we're gonna grab that. Is there money to be made? The grand viaduct from receiving esteemed guests is buried under the rubble. It's a shame. have a backup plan pilot Nemos the pilot dressed in a crumpled uniform adorned with the von Valanche's coat of arms still looks quite pale her white hands bear red marks left by the wheel the scream of terror she left out when a missile's flight flew right past your shuttle is etched in your memory her voice quivers slightly but even her fear cannot stop her from using typical voidsman jargon. That was some flight, your lordship. If we'd been a little less lucky, we'd be checking in at the port of the in the sky right now. What was that weaponry fired at us? Can't say I know, your lordship. 
but the shot uh, it fires certainly fly quick. I've never seen guns like that before. They were firing from far away, almost beyond the bar, the horizon, that is. Who gave those jobs a terrifying, terrifying contraption like that? Your name, pilot. My bad there, your lordship. Senior flyer, senior pilot Nimas. Appointed by senior deck officers to serve on your personal shuttle. Uh, okay, we're gonna... Always keep your gonna go out in the heat of battle here. But uh, this is going to be the end of this episode. Thanks for watching and have a really nice day.